is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. There he is. There he is. How you doing, my man? After I'm a Del- after a W, doing a little bit better. Uh, always nice to come on the Accurate Pembroke Pines Report. Uh, optimistic and. What what emotional swings the Heat have put us through in these past two weeks? Oh, they beat Boston. They're great. Oh, they lose to the shorthanded Grizzlies and the terrible Pistons. They suck. Oh, they beat a Clippers team that still had Paul George and talent out there. They're contenders again. The roller coaster has been unbelievable, Big O, in just these last seven days since I spoke to you last Friday on our Acura Pembroke Pines report before the Heat went out and had probably their best game of the season against the Celtics. Yeah, no, that 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 was the point where we were like, okay, is this a turning point? And are they and then we got the duds, you know, after that. And hell, even last night, didn't the Clippers just lose also to the Magic? Yeah, no, the Clippers lost to the Magic and were playing on the second night of a back to back and didn't have Kawhi Leonard. So they were not the be all end all. What I look at Big O is this. Are there heat moments in a game where I can say to myself, you know what? Because of what they have, this translates to something better. We know what Jimmy is a closer translates into, he he's a hell of a closer. He, he did those moments against Boston. He did it against the Clippers. Cojones, he's, man. He's just got cojones. Cojones like nobody's it's business. It's like hard I, way. I, it's like, you know, certain guys, that, you know, way certain guys that have been on this, in this team over the years that just have cojones, dude. That's, well, and that's uh, the thing. And we have, we have to find if Acura has a big enough SUV to suit those cojones because they oh. were huge last night. No, I don't no, know if there's such a big one. Yeah. I don't know if there's a big one out there. You were speaking on, our, on, on just before about Bam Adebayo growing. He had another moment last night. And that's, that's all you could ask for, Big O, is you want him to have these moments that he's moving forward. We saw that last night. To me, that's encouraging also. Tyler but, made but, I need him, but I need him to grow up to be Barkov. I need I need him that, to grow up it. to be Zoe. I need him to grow up to be if if they're going to get to that pinnacle, you know what I mean? Where where Jimmy had them uh, on the on the brink of getting there doesn't mean that they were going to win it. But if they, if you want to win it, then Bam or Tyler have to become special. Not yeah, Bam, good. Bam's been special. Bam's had three 30 point games in the last seven. Bam took over 20 shots. He's aggressive. I mean, he's playing at an all star level. Well, that's, he, but that's a small sample. I need it extended now. You know what you I know, mean? Okay, I need, but, I need this the rest of the season. In the I last need- seven games, he has had 20 or more shots three times, 30 or more mm-hmm. points three times. He's making that move. Now he's adjusting to doing it with Jimmy Butler also. And mm-hmm. I like the thought of this. I don't necessarily need him to be a closer because we have our closer. No, 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 no. But I need him to carry. To carry I mean, the I mean, game so yeah. Jimmy Butler doesn't have to play to the point of exhaustion. So when Kyle Lowry comes back, he doesn't have to play 38 minutes. I agree. You know what? He is. You know, we always talk about this, Big O. He's trending. And as long as someone is trending in the right direction, we'll take it for that. Now, when he comes up tomorrow's game against the horrific Spurs, against Indiana, and then next week against Oklahoma City, the Rockets and the Spurs, he has to continue this. There's no one in his way. There's no dominant big man, maybe Miles Turner, but otherwise no in the next four games who should be getting in his way. So we'll see. But you know what? It's trending the right way. All of a sudden, you look at the way Bam's playing, you look at the contract, and you go, okay. I could see what they were thinking right there. That makes sense and makes sense more than a lot of the other contracts on this team right now. And by the way, to his credit also, Tyler has really picked it up too. Um, It's not last night. It's not just the points. It's nine rebounds. It's three assists. It's two steals. That's the other thing that I'm noticing about Tyler is that I don't know what it is, but it seems like there's a focus on rounding out his game and not just being a shooter. And to his credit, I'm also noticing that. And if this team is going to get to where I, where I was just talking about while you were there on hold, those are the two guys, yeah. man, that they've got to be special. They've got to bring it. That way, Lowry can be a facilitator at best, occasional score, and Jimmy can also be the defender, the facilitator, and then kind of coast until the end and then, oh, we need you, Jimmy. Boom. And he can turn it on and turn it off because that's who he is. He's got that. But in the middle, 
I, I need Tyler and I need Bam to carry. Much credit to Tyler in his game lately. Yes. And you know what? It's interesting. We had a very interesting conversation in the hallway yesterday as we were getting ready to go in the locker room pregame about what we call empty calories, statistically. Guys who get numbers and they translate into nothing. Right. Earlier in the year and early in his career, I felt that Tyler Hero was somewhat of an empty calories player. He'd get his points, the Heat would lose. My comparative there is Hassan Whiteside, Whiteside. the all-time Heat leader in empty calories. He got his numbers, and it didn't translate. Now we're seeing Tyler did not shoot particularly well last night, did not have a great percentage from the field. Oh. Oh. But he made plays and gave you what you needed at times that you needed it, including getting off the ball and deferring to others. That's what you want to see. So many times you and I will, you'll talk about or, or, or someone on our chat will come in about a name. We should get this guy. We should get that guy. And I go, nah, even John Collins, to a degree, it's empty calorie numbers. I don't want empty calories. I want something that's tangible and means something. We're getting that now from Bam. We're getting that from Tyler. You've always gotten that from Jimmy Butler. You're getting that more oh, yeah. from Caleb Martin. Yeah. That's what you yeah. need. The problem is the second unit. We're getting a bunch of empty calories there. It, it, right. it, Max Struess has been so up and down, and you're going to have to pay him this season. Victor Oladipo is at best going to be a nice player. He's never – I don't mean to sort of ruin everything. Oh, no, he'll he'll never be an all-star again. again. Yeah, he's, he's not, not going to be the all-star again. He's going to be no. the guy who could fill in. So you look at all these guys. Dwayne Dedman, I mean, last night, very uneven. It's hard for him. He's clearly hurt. He's clearly older. That yeah. impacts it also. So this is the fine line, Big O. When there isn't the support system, you and I, every team at the start of the season, oh, we have great depth. We're in great shape. We go nine deep. Who's not going to play? Now, all of a sudden, you look at the second unit and you go, who is going to play? Who is going to help? Because if you wear these guys down, you'll have moments like last night when Eric Spolstra says, hey, I have to cry uncle and sit Kyle Lowry. He can't keep doing this every single night at the minutes he's playing. So what they really need is a support system. All of a sudden, the big trade you and I are talking about, I'm not so sure they don't need a small trade. Just one more piece, maybe a stretch five, a stretch four to help them. You know what? This could have been Omar Yurtsevin's time. Unfortunately, he had that ankle surgery. And, and by the way, he is done for the year, or is there a chance? No, they're saying he's coming back, but I've seen this okay. act before. I, I don't mean that condescendingly. So if we're talking March, and you've missed all that time, and, they, and the train has left the station, can you really work your way back into shape? Because as you know, Big O, having been here as long as I have, when you bring guys back late, like Alonzo Mourning in that 2000-2001 season when it was going so great with Anthony Mason and Brian Grant, and they were in a great place, and you try to force someone back in, that can be difficult at the end also. So, yes, the hope is that Omar Yurtsevin comes back, but something that dramatic and playing big, big and putting him in there, I think that's going to be hard. I would not hold out hope of Omar Yurtsevin being a game changer for the Heat this season. Maybe he'll give you something. It'll be a bonus at this stage. Okay, and, and I know, you know, obviously the Jay Crowder stuff has been talked about, all that. But with Highsmith and Kane, at what point do you start to increase their time to maybe help you out in that power rotation? Because those guys seem to have a little bit of a knack to to help you out again in the boards. And yeah, they're kind of interesting. Active. Haywood Highsmith did not play until the third quarter, second half yesterday, when Caleb yeah. Martin got his fourth foul. So. On one hand, you're talking about confidence, but in a game you absolutely had to win, he didn't play in the first half. Here's the greater question for you and Heat Nation out there. We've been talking about an upgrade of power forward all season, and I mentioned this to Kurt Heelan on our redrecover.com inside the paint show and on our previous Acura Pembroke Pines reports. Right now, straight up, forget about the numbers. I asked you this Monday, would you trade Caleb Martin for Jay Crowder? Oh, shit. <laughs> the clock is ticking. No. Okay. So no, because no, because uh, um, Jay Crowder doesn't mean a championship. Interesting. So if it doesn't mean a championship, why am I going to get rid of a guy for for a future guy, a guy for the next few years that Bingo you can Bingo. develop, and he helps you in so many areas for a guy that really has a year left or two in the tank, just like the other guys you have. No, no, I'm not doing that. And no. here's the thing, and, and and that's what I spoke to Kurt Heelan about, and I read Recover.com inside the paint show is. Caleb Martin has a three-year, $20 million contract. Bargain. That's a value contract. Yeah. That's going to give you two more seasons of quality money 
in the same team who's spending on Duncan Robinson and Kyle Lowry's getting 30 plus million next year and the other money in Tyler Hero. 17 points, eight rebounds, two yeah. steals, two assists for that money. I'll yes. take it, bro. Yes. I'll take so, it. Are you kidding me? I'm, but now listen, Ira, I'm a little biased. You know, I've been a Caleb guy from the get go. So I, I, I just love multifaceted guys because this guy for me is a pure heat player. You know, so that's here's, kind of here's part two of that equation. And this is, you know, it's interesting. You just told me you wouldn't do Jay Crowder because he doesn't move the bar enough to make you a championship contender in your view. Right. Would you give up a future first-round pick and some cal salary filler for Jay Crowder? In other words, would you go in that yes. direction? Yes. Yes. Okay. But yes. then what that does is it robs you of the multiple picks to make the big off-season move because then all of a sudden you might be trading a player and a Duncan Robinson and some money, but also two picks just like the Lakers can. So you get into that also for a miles Turner or someone like that. Haven't we, haven't we been fishing in this ocean for a while now? And we keep wondering, is this 2010 again? Because it hasn't happened. Yeah, but you it's know been, what? It's been several years. And then you have to tell me also who is available to me, who is well, going to become and, available. And the, pool, and the pool will change next summer because some teams will underperform and need to make a move and players will become available. Look, this who, is like who, the dead. Who's going to become available? Who, who do you see who, who in Ira Winderman's crystal ball? Okay, do I hold out for that trade and keep that first round pick to put it for a package? Because who might become available? Because the Bradley Beal thing, that 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 story keeps getting old. The ranch getting older now at this yeah. point. So when who who's gonna become available? I don't but know. That's who the exact kind available. of name I mentioned is a Bradley Beal. If you feel you're that close and all of a sudden Washington realizes they aren't going anywhere, they're gonna have a typical wizard season. Maybe they'll ask for less on a dollar, including taking a Duncan Robinson if they can get draft choices and moving that for something else. Look, this is like when you're watching Deadliest Catch and they got that fish on the reel for hours and hours and hours. But do Is you that too many many have, have enough to in? trade for Bradley Beal, or or are you just holding out for a a trade that won't happen because you're going to get outbid by four other teams that will have more assets? I'm holding out for the kind of trade where someone wants to get someone where and forces his hand. Look, Kevin Durant couldn't do it this time around. We have to see what happens to the Nets. There probably will be a next time around. You're right. I can understand you and Heat Nation are on our biweekly accurate Pembroke Pines report saying. I'm sick of the same old story. Give me something new or grow it. I agree with the grow it. Grow it with Bam. Grow it with, with Tyler. But you know what? You will have, as you've mentioned, with the Kyle Lowry contract, that expiring contract after the season. Year. When yeah. maybe someone has so much money sunk into someone. Look, I'm not a huge Julius Randle guy. Stop rolling your oh. eyes, Big O. Oh, but God. what I'm saying is, if the Knicks are crappy and he has that long-term deal and you think he might be your four to compliment Bam, you no. might move in that direction. Stop shaking your head. Stop shaking your head, my friend. You or, know he's not a heat player. That okay. guy, that guy, that guy, no. But what I'm trying no. to say, guys, guys like that, the teams that don't make the playoffs, when the Bulls go in the crapper, whether it's Vucevic and you want to try to get a nice stretch five, stretch four next to Bam, that could be intriguing. You okay. have to have assets available. Remember, the Bulls gave up two first-round picks for Vucevic. They're going to want draft capital in return. So what you have to do is you have to follow the sinking teams, the teams that thought they would be something and aren't. The difference is, as Eric Can we trade for Banchero? Can we trade for Banchero? Yeah, you're not getting someone's top pick. You're not getting that, and you're not getting Bowl Bowl either, which I know I'm they trying. already had the rights I'm to. I'm trying here. I'm but trying. you know what? But there are players out there on the Wizards, on the Knicks, on the Bulls, on all the teams who thought they would be something and aren't. Charlotte with P.J. Washington, a very intriguing name. They are going nowhere. Maybe that's a name you look into. He would be wonderful alongside Bam Adebayo. They as, have long, as, long as, he, as long as he leaves Brittany Renner behind so she's not producing all kinds of kids with him. But yes, yeah, again, you know, and, and again, that's the other, that's the non-accurate Pembroke Pines report stuff. We'll get at the top of the hour on the Big O Show. I'm staying clear of that. What I'm saying is big O is there are Do you even know who Brittany Renner is, by the way? Uh, I, I, I don't. That's why okay. I kind of stay clear of that. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let Sean put up the video and we'll go from there. Look, last night Eric Spolster was asked about Barkley's comments. He was angry. He was like, "Have you? do you have any idea who we are? We don't give up on seasons. We don't turn our back on possibilities. We go for it. And a matter of fact, I was listening to the Big O Show this morning just before I came on. 
and their host, uh, what's his name? Oh, Orlando Alzagari was saying the Heat's championship window was closed. And I was sitting here putting my middle finger up to the camera because I wasn't on the air yet. Big O, they were one shot from last season's NBA Finals. They were in the NBA Finals three years ago. Now, you might think it's closed, and I might think it's closed. But well, that one, the- that one was realistic, actually. Okay. If Bam and, if Bam and, and, Goron. Uh, Goron. and Goron stay healthy, right. uh, they have a shot in that one. Last still, year, it would have been, it would have been nice to get there, but they weren't going to win. You I mean. know what? You, you would have, could have, should have. We're talking about a puncher's shot. You get to the finals. Another team has an injury. Something happens. You have a shot. What I'm saying is you, have, you can't forget recent history. They were one shot from last season's NBA, NBA finals. And I think you still have to look at it. The window never closes for the Heat for this reason. This team always in the second half of the season is better. Their record was not appreciably better at this point last season. Then they went on the roll. They got to the top of the standings. You know what? The good thing about these accurate Pembroke Pines reports is that twice a week, every week, when we get into February and March, if you start saying that, I'll have a bigger tangible body of evidence to say whether I agree with you or not. But right now I'm still thinking I've seen this act so often and they have found their way and they come together. And that M effort, Jimmy Butler at the moments of truth of which these are not takes his game to another level. So he just, but he needs somebody else to become an M effort. And Bam is getting there and Tyler is moving toward that. And that's the thing. When That'll change my young, mind. That'll change my mind okay. if when you're mixing if Bam or you're Tyler mixing become an MFer, yeah. then that'll change my mind because then if if we're just going to wait for Butler to save you every day, it, it, he's not that kind of superstar. Well, is my let, point. And let's let the kids grow into themselves because I got to tell you, the strides that have been made from the start of the season to now in just two months for Tyler Hero have been tangible. The strides yes. made by Bam Adebayo in two months have been tangible. So let's say from where they went from October, mid-October to mid-December, they can go from mid-December to mid-February. Perfect timing. That's the trade deadline. If they, if their growth curve is still as parabolic as it is right now, then I think I might be able to change the opinion of that dour Big O who's on every morning right here on the Big O Show. What do you got working uh, on the Sunset No, sir? As, I posted uh, a story early this morning to San Antonio tomorrow. Yes, San Antonio tomorrow, five o'clock, unusual start. So everyone will be late anyway. We kind of expect that, but don't show up at eight o'clock because then the game will be over. Um, I wrote a story in Bam Adebayo and Eric Spolster pointing out last night how he's starting to get very unique double teams and traps out of respect. So, Mister Adebayo, you want your twenty shots a game? You're going to get your twenty double teams a game. He worked out of it very well last night, but this is the next step. This is what Tyler. Dealt he's with a great last- passer. That's yeah. the beauty of all of that yes. with, with Bam. He has such great court vision right. that, that you know, you know, Shaq didn't get enough credit for his vision as a passer at times, right. you know, and, and so that's the beauty. Duncan, all these kind of guys that, you know, it, bring the double team to me. That's yes. good. That The great quarterback wants to get blitzed. Why? Because he knows there's going to be a hole somewhere available and he knows exactly where it's going to be. And that's the beauty of Bam yeah. that he – he can handle the double team. Man. And he'll grow into it. So, again, that's the sign of respect. Tyler went through it last year with the double teams, learned about it, Bam's learning. And I just it's just such different times. And even he said, yeah, we have the iPad on the bench. So during games, he is going to school on the game. Such different times. I mean, can you imagine the, the perfect season Dolphins and seeing Zonka and Jim Kick over there with some sort of computer in front of him? They would have thrown it in Shula's face. Get this out of here. It is crazy that during the game, you're actually sitting there and learning plays. We see it all the time now with that Surface computer in the NFL. That's all the guys are looking at. It's just different times. So Bam was very open and spoke about that. So I have that. Um, I'm also working on my Sunday column. Uh, December 15th, next weekend, is when most players signed in the offseason can be traded. So will things sort of loosen up a little bit more so you can throw even more rumors at me? So that's getting closer also. Like it. All right. Follow him on Twitter at Ira Heatbeat and make sure you subscribe to the South Florida Sun Sentinel. Ira, as always, thank you, my friend. Have a great weekend. Catch you Monday after Tua beats up on Justin Herbert. And we'll talk then. Thanks. That's Big right, up. baby. You got it. Thank you, Ira. And of course, we are out here at Craig Zinn's Acura Pembroke Pines at 15601 Pines Boulevard, just off of I 75 and Pines. Come on out here. We got a large selection of brand new vehicles, of certified pre-owned vehicles all over, baby. 
So you can come on out here and pick the car you want, the color you want, the model you want, the style you want. But more importantly, the price you want. Yes, sir. It is Craig Zins, Acura of Pembroke Pines. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.